Okay, so I had a video that was going to come out later today talking about Michael Buble and the comments he made about the Vancouver Canucks culture change in the locker room. But we are going to move that video to tomorrow because there has been some breaking news that I think every Canucks fan is thinking about instead, and that is the Hall of Fame announcement. Who has been elected into the Hall of Fame for 2022 amongst the players, amongst the builders, etc., etc.? And the results are super great for Canucks fans. A lot of other fans I'm seeing all over social media are trashing this decision, but who cares? Let's go out there and talk about this year's class. We have ourselves Daniel Alfredson. He had been eligible for a few years. He finally gets in after a storied career with the Ottawa Senators and I guess the Detroit Red Wings as well. You have yourselves Henrik and Daniel Sedin, baby. Oh, man. We're going to talk about that as the video goes on. You also have Roberto Luongo. So, Canucks fans, we eating good today, baby. We're doing really well. Yeah, thank you for asking. We also have Rika Salinen, who is an absolute goat on the Finnish women's hockey scene. And you have Herb Carnegie as a builder. Now, Carnegie is a conversation that we do need to have towards the end of the video, but when it comes to the NHL players that we had seen inducted into this year's class, Alfredson, Luongo, Sedin, Sedin, firstly, yeah, good for the Canucks fans, right? Secondly, good for the Swedish fans, because Alfie plus Hank and Dank, all Swedes, and you have yourselves the Bobby Lou in there as well. I wanted to talk about these four, because when it comes to the conversations I'm seeing all over social media, everybody's like, oh, McGillney got snubbed, oh, Patrick Elias got Got snubbed. Oh, Zetterberg got snubbed. All these players are better than the Sedins. Why did they go out there and get two Sedins in the Hall of Fame? And this is kind of an interesting thing to talk about because when it comes to eligibility, this is actually the first time Sedins and Luongo are eligible to enter the Hall. They enter it together, which is crazy. But the nominations for the Sedins specifically is not because, oh, because Daniel Sedin is a better player than Alex McGillney, or oh, because Henrik Sedin is a better player than a 400 goal scorer in Patrick Elias. It's not specifically like that. Yes, I know they did not win any Stanley Cups, but you go over what they did win. These two guys have Olympic gold championships. These guys have international success, and these guys have individual awards that also put them at the top of the mountain too. Henrik and Daniel Sedin both won Art Ross trophies. Henrik Sedin did it in the midst of the primes of Nick Backstrom, Alex Ovechkin, Crosby, Malkin, St. Louis. A lot of fantastic players you had in that scoring race with Henrik and Daniel Sedin during those times. The fact that both of these players independently had 1,000 points each. Henrik had 1,070 points in 1,330 games played. Daniel Sedin had 1,157 points in 1,246 games played. Henrik had a Hart Trophy in 2010. Daniel had a Ted Lindsay in 2011. These guys were doing this in the midst of the primes of some of the best players we have ever seen, like Crosby, like Ovechkin, etc. And they were just talented enough players to be the best players in the world for a short period of time. Now, that's not to say that Henrik or Daniel Sedin independently were better than Alex McGillney. It's just the fact is you have two guys that were born together. They lived together. They grew up together. They played hockey together. They happened to be good enough at hockey together to both get drafted into the NHL and then you recognize that they were drafted by the same team and placed onto the same line for pretty much their entire careers. I get it, these guys were pretty much joint at the hip, in the most unironic way you could say that possible, but that is just a story that you will never see again. Or at least, if you do, it's gonna be a long freaking time from now. The peculiarity of the Sedin story, plus the fact that they legitimately were amazing hockey players, is why they got inducted first ballot. We were talking about this in the stream yesterday, that yes, they're good enough and their story is good enough to be considered first ballot if they weren't twins and they didn't have that entire story behind it, I'm not sure they would have been first ballot, but like, the fact is, you would have needed to take up two spots to get the Sedins in there, which adds another layer of complexity, but the Hall of Fame just said, screw it, Henrik and Daniel in, first ballot, internationally successful, individually successful at the NHL level awards, gold medals, a thousand points, plus the twin story, they are good enough to get in, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, but Zetterberg has more cups, or oh, Eliash, more cups, etc., etc., but this entire class does not have any Stanley Cups between them, which is very interesting to me. These two were like, okay, if I try to describe how they played, think of the modern NHL 22 player 
and how much they overpass the puck to force a cross crease. The Sedins did that. They would spin around, they would position themselves to protect the puck properly, they would make sure that nobody has good angles at stealing the puck away before slipping a behind the back door pass, which is uncontested, right to the other Sedin. It fools the goalie, it fools the opposite players, and the Sedins had so many amazing clips where they were just going out there Harlem Globetrottersing around the opposite team. And there were so many clips of them not scoring on these plays either. The Sedins, in every game they played after they kind of hit that mark in the mid-2000s, they just became so dominant and so different that it's difficult to ever think we're ever going to see a pairing like the Sedins again, where they were just, of course, twins, but they just had such a high level of chemistry and teamwork that... You know, it's so unique. That also is an added part as to why they're getting in here yet, not just because of the individual talent itself. It's how they work together. You were not going to induct one Sedin and have the other one come in next year. It was not going to go down like that. I'm sorry. You go over to Roberto Luongo and you acknowledge that this guy was one of the best and most consistent goalies the NHL had ever seen. He didn't win the Vesna Trophy, but he probably should have a few times. He had three finalist nominations, though, so... Good for him. He also was a Hart finalist in 07 because the Vancouver Canucks were not really all too great of a team in front of him, but he still went out there and posted up a 9-2-1 in 76 games played. Roberto Luongo is the best goaltender the Vancouver Canucks have ever had. He also was the best goaltender the Florida Panthers ever had. His career save percentage of a 919 in 1,045 games played is certainly not bad, and he is the fourth winningest goaltender of all time, while also being in the top 10 for overall save percentage for goaltenders at over 200 games played. Luongo is a stud, and he has been pretty much the entire time he was in the National Hockey League, so this is very well deserved for him too. Danny Alfredson, as we said, had himself a great career with the Sens and the Red Wings. He had 1,157 points in 1,246 games played, so oddly enough, a pretty similar point-per-game number to Daniel Sedin over there. But, of course, Alfie was the captain of Ottawa for a long time. There is such a historied love for this player throughout that city that has extended for such a long time. And the fact that Alfredson was 10 years apart, posting up 70-point years. Like, this guy was just one of the definitions of longevity without winning any Stanley Cup hardware himself. Plus, getting in with the Sedins, that's pretty nice for him, I would feel. You go over to the other nominations over here. Rika Salonen, as we said earlier, was one of the best Finnish women's hockey players ever, and I guess you could say just Finnish players ever. She's gotten so many gold medals, so many bronze medals, so many instances of international participation with Team Finland, and she's the all-time leading scorer for European players in the World Championships and the Olympics, so... Yeah, very, very great. She also played in the Olympics in 2018. She's 49 years old, so... That was four years ago. She was 45. That is incredible. She got a bronze medal. Oldest player to ever win an Olympic medal in ice hockey. Fantastic. And then going over onto our final nominee over here, Herb Carnegie, 100 years ago, Jamaican hockey player who was indeed not white. He was really good. And he contributed to the success of hockey in the area by starting up hockey schools, etc., etc. But Con Smythe, the guy whom the Con Smythe Trophy is named after, owner of the Maple Leafs in 1938, was alleged to have said this, that he would have accepted Carnegie on the Maple Leafs if he were white, or that he would pay $10,000 to anyone who could turn Carnegie white. Nowadays, there's been some contention as to whether or not Smythe did indeed say that, but it's been a pretty significant part of the longer-term history of breaking barriers into the National Hockey League and getting more people involved that are not just white. Despite this, though, he did indeed play with Jean Beliveau, and he was coached by Punch Imlock, so there was a very good mark of a player here. It's just a long time ago, in the 30s and the 40s, things were different. So, Herb Carnegie coming into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2022, alongside of these wonderful names over here as well, Sadine, Sadine, Luongo, Alfie, and Salonen. It's going to be interesting to see where the conversation goes from here, because everybody's talking about McGillney and how talented he was, how Theo Fleury is not in the Hall of Fame yet either, and how the Sadines got in first ballot. At the end of the day... I'm just going to sit back as a Canucks fan, sip my tea, and be like, yeah, let's watch some Sedin highlights, because these guys were phenomenal, and maybe we'll get some great saves by Luongo thrown in there as well. Talk to me in the comments about your thoughts about the Hall of Fame inductees for 2022. I hope you enjoyed this video. By the way, the Michael Bublé video is coming out tomorrow. We talked about his interview on Donnie and Dolly. It's a pretty good one, so if you go over and watch that, I will be very happy with you. And... 
Goodbye.